Hey, I'm Decathlon Gamer, and welcome back to Pro Cycling Manager 2021. It's career mode. This is episode 134. It's stage five of the Tour de France, hey, and the our goal, our objective for this race is to win the green up. jersey. And right now, Ercas Bernotas wears that the jersey, and actually, kind of comfortably, as we go inside, 10k to go on this stage. No red bar. Taking into that yellow bar a little bit. Now eight and a half K to go. So we'll start pushing again here with Markovic Kilic. Try to get onto the back end. Uh, we've got that growing group at the tail end that are there to uh, provide a little bit of support to the team by keeping guys, keeping sprinters a little bit further off our back. So on to Sifsi now. 5.4 K to go. The finish line is getting close. The and riders see a couple teams trying to push to get upside us, but having difficulty doing so. And it's 4.1k, so get those last gels going. 3.8k. 3.5. 3k to go. 2.5. Sift C, I want you to sprint with what is your sprint right now. 2k to go. That's Sekaguchi's time to go. Bernotas, Kalnins, Isakov, everybody sprinting. Bernotas is not going to hang on. He's out of red bar. Out of red bar, nearly gets the stage. That's Pedersen, Gourmet, but Bernotas does get a podium, and Kalnins gets fifth, and that's what it's going to take for us to win this. It's going to take different winners. This is Pedersen's first win, but it's also going to take me getting Bernotas and Kalnins up there consistently. Sekiguchi only 14th, so he's barely going to get any points today. But also the right there behind him to be is Bruno Vegan. Vermeulen just ahead of him. Ewan Cockard, who we haven't even seen any of. Plenty of sprinters well off the back today. Drizners has been, uh, I think, second best so far in this competition, and he finished just 8th. Koish, just 7th. So yes, that is a good result for us that there's a couple of different guys up near the top in Pedersen, Gourmet, and Alex, plus my usual two right there in the mix. Sprint list, we're ninth. So we've already gotten one stage win. I don't think we're going to get too many more, if at all. I'm hoping to get one more anyway along the way. But a lot of consistent performances like this is what it's going to take to win that green jersey. Massive points on the day, 58 Gourmet got 39, so we do lose a bit of ground to him, but here is where things stand at this point. 110 points for Bernotas, still in the lead, but Matt, Mats Pedersen more than doubled his points total and closed that gap to 8 with a huge day for him, probably a plus 5 race day condition, you would think. Uh, Gourmet, 61, well off the back, and Kalnins sits 4th with 54. Drizners, Marte are both up there. Alex for Mullen, Koish in the low 40s. Number of contenders has fallen off a little bit, but as you can see from Pedersen, one good day with a top intermediate sprint and winning the stage can add up to a lot of points. You get 50 for winning a sprint stage, by the way, so he got eight at the intermediate sprint. We're going to bypass most intermediate sprints the rest of the way, but as we are close enough to the finish on this one, figured it would be worthwhile to show you. Our last intermediate sprint did not go well. There was a group that attacked pretty hard from pretty far out, and we did not uh, keep up with them. So we got some very minor placings, not too many points, and at the moment we are struggling uh, in the same sort of manner that we could face a difficult uh, sprint here as Bernotas and Kalnins are both caught behind a number of riders with just 3k to go. If they're going to contend, they're going to have to get up here. You can see the other guys are already challenging, and that's going to be a real issue as Sekaguchi gets up here and can start his sprint. Uh, I can also get Sifsi sprinting as, you know, stealing something away from somebody else will help us. But uh, Bernotas and Kalanins are both caught out this time, and I'd like Kalanins is in a better position, so let's see if he can't get a few points to get up there, but it's not looking so good at the moment. It in fact, like Bernotas is down to just a two-point lead over Mads Pedersen, okay both of them on. getting caught out this time around, not being able to find some space. The only good news is they definitely saved some energy 
compared to uh, what is necessary and what the others gave as we have a finish coming up fairly soon. But unlike other stages, that was it today because it's the murder of he and I don't think we're going to fare too well on the final climb. It's not... That's La Havre. La Hav? It's La Hav, right? That's not Murda Hui. It is a Hui. And the Mur is the climb part, right? Ignorant American that speaks one language and little bits and pieces of other languages. 37k to go. And the guys are looking pretty good. Let's speed this up. Let's also get back to uh, protecting our leaders. Well, sprinters on the day. By the way, any chance Isakov had is long gone. He is 742 down overall, so uh, we are not going to focus on anything for him other than getting to the end of stages. Let's protect uh, Sekikuchi as well. And some are I don't think these guys are going to do much, but if we can get them anything in terms of the minor placings, then they will earn points. They like today. Considered a sprint stage. So there is 50 points available at the finish line. That's big time points if you can at the moment. get even a minor placing on a day like this. There's a breakaway in the leading group. Now the guy who really won, I don't know if he won this stage, but the guy who won the green jersey at this real life tour was Peter Sagan. Uh, you would think he would fare pretty well on a stage like this. Michael Matthews might do an okay job on a stage like this, but there are not too many sprinters in the world who are going to still be in contention. 22k to go starting to set the in a little bit but one of the guys are lead. still fresh still ready to go 20k to go little downhill section before you get into that final bit but you need a little more for that final bit it's gonna be difficult to get much out of that one. really is the pack gave them no chance but we'll do what we can 16k almost time to set up the sprint train but with that little final climb we'll push on a little longer, a little longer, a little longer. Okay, 4.7. Sounds good. Killinch being out front and on the worst race day condition makes him the natural candidate to get us started. He doesn't have to go crazy here, but we do want to get out front. EF trying to control things at the moment. Killinch, there we go. Starting to get some team support. I want him to get out in front of this guy. There's now just 10 kilometers there left. Isakov slotting into position here finally. Sifsi was holding up waiting for him. Here comes Markovic. The are closing on the last 8 kilometers of the stage. 8k to go. Let's speed it up. up Sifsi in place. Sakaguchi is in place. Hamadovic is still not in place. Kalnins and Bernotas is nowhere to be seen. 5k to go. Bernotas is way back there. Five He's got kilometers to the finish like line. Four K to go. That's gel for everybody. And let's stretch this field. It's the only way we're gonna get anything right now. Bernotas finally coming up in position just in time. 2.5 K, so Isakov is going to sprint. Markovic is going to sprint. They are going to start climbing here in a moment, which is not our strong suit. Good it's run by Markovic. Markovic needs to give his sprint 1.3k. This is the punchy part that's just hurt. not our strong suit. But can we get a minor placing? As you get over the top of this, it's going to ease off. Sekaguchi can sprint out of this. 700 meters. And he's going to come along pretty fast. Notas is going to gain. He's going to get some points. He is going to get some points. Really then Art takes the win. Alex is going to grab some really good points. Pedersen gets fourth. That's understandable. Marte. He's going to take over the points lead for the time being. Sekiguchi gets 15th. Bernotas gets 17th. Boy, where does the points end? The are still 18th? 20th? There might be a few points in order for the day. And once again... Kalnins missing out completely. He was just 31st 
on the stage, and that was also why we're focusing on Bernotas. Is Bernotas is punchier, has better stamina resistance, even though Kalman's is on the fitness peak and gets the better race day condition bonuses. It's not enough to make up for what Bernotas is gaining. 17th on the stage, hopefully was worth a, a few points anyway. I know we're going to get some of those intermediate points, but not a great day in the sprint for us. Uh, but neutral race day condition and very much a profile that does not fit. Five points for Bernotas, four for Kalnins. Sekaguchi gets three, Sifsi gets two. I think all or most of that came at the intermediate sprint and not the finish. So Pedersen does move into the lead. He is our real competition at this point. Van Art moves up the order. Alex has been looking good, uh, but he's 30 points back. Gourmet, 40 points back. Others are already getting to be too far behind. It's only stage six. We're not quite a third of the way through this race. However, a lot of the sprint stages are in the first half. There's not much in the second half of this race. So we've already seen a lot of the sprint stages we're going to have. So their, their numbers are thinning. And then it's going to come down to when can you go get some points. And that's sending somebody in the break. Somebody named Bernotas into the break to pick up some intermediate points here and there and gain something over his competitors, which could turn the tides for him. He has to stay in touching distance. 16 points behind is absolutely within range at this stage. Stage seven is the final Wait, sprint stage left. for a week. Stage 15 is the next one we have. And then Champs-Élysées 21 is the only other one we have after that. So we are really nearing the end. This is the last, we only have two more times in this race where there's going to be 50 points on offer for a stage. So therefore we are really going to need to give it our all. So far so good on this one as uh, the intermediate sprint went really well as we grabbed second, third, and fifth after three breakaway riders who took maximum points and that really helped us out uh, on getting a top result now we have a bit of a descent here we're at the 10k banner and we're about to start going downhill now it's not steep downhill but you know we're going 3.7 and you can see that it's not wearing out the, the field at all so we're, we're gonna have to really start pushing here uh, and go 99 the rest of the way there is a slight uphill on the finish for this one so uh, that is one thing we got to be prepared for, is the slight uphill at the finish. You can see Killen just putting in a pretty good time at the moment, but that flattened out for a little bit. Amadovich taking over, 5k to go now. Kilometers. Keeping that pace high, making it really hard for anybody to get up beside us. Gels are starting to kick off for the front guys, 3.3. Sifsi, not much of a sprinter, but we need to get started right now. These guys are going already. Sekaguchi into his sprint. Oh, cut off on the corner here. Can we find some space into the final K? Renotas. How, how, how many of these guys have gone too early and who can he overtake? He managed the sprint like a master of his craft. He was certainly the fastest today. Oh, Sekaguchi just ahead of Renotas. Marte, Perry, Ewan. Pedersen fourth. Again, we got to watch out for him. Sekaguchi. Bernotas was seventh, so he will lose some points to Pedersen, but we did gain some at the intermediate sprint, so we at least didn't. Our, our net loss is minor today. Everybody else is really starting to get too far back. Out the of contention. Kalnins, uh, for one thing, 16th. Uh, another time where he just could not handle it and missed out completely. Pedersen grabbed 27 points today. Bernotas got 23, Sekaguchi just won less, not that he's in that classification or anything, but we are exactly 20 points down on Mads Pedersen right now. Pedersen, meanwhile, is a 79-78 sprint, but he's got that 81 flat that really helps out. He's got that 78 stamina, 77 resistance, 74 recovery, 74 downhill, 74 cobble, all very, very useful, very well-rounded rider that makes him tough to beat he can almost climb he's a little bit punchy that gives him 
an edge in so, so many different profiles that you face. He's not just a pure sprinter. On paper, Bernotas is a hair better than him. Should be beating him in a sprint more frequently than he does. But for all we know, Pedersen is on a fitness peak and has an objective here because he's been tough to beat. He's been tough to beat uh, pretty regularly. And only two pure sprints to go. So intermediate sprints on big time stages. We'll see how those ones shake up and if he can make some gains. I'd love to get him into a breakaway or two over the coming seven stages. And hopefully at least compete well in the intermediates. We'll see if I need to intervene at some time. But otherwise, it might be stage 15 before uh, we see our next live stage. The punchy stage 8 had one intermediate and then a bit of a climb at the end. Mads Pedersen was able to do pretty well on this stage. And it wasn't from the stage finish. It was the intermediate. He took max points in the intermediate, which means Mad Pedersen, Mads Pedersen was able to get into the breakaway and take maximum points from there. I wanted Bernotas in the breakaway. He didn't make it. He ended up with minor points, and he loses 14 points on the day by only getting six points at the intermediate sprint and nothing at the finish. The gap has opened up a bit more. Stage nine, I can't help myself. It's a team time trial. I'm always trying to work on this craft, always trying to get better. So we set off as a group. 91's harder than I want to go, but I do think I want to try to set an 88. I've got the time set down a little bit so they rotate a little faster. It is 27 kilometers in length, and so far the 87 is, or sorry, 88 effort is definitely not going too deep. When it's their turn, they dig in get a little bit red bar going but the yellow bar is better for everyone who's been at the back end it goes a little bit deeper than where you want to be when you're at the front end but they are keeping it fairly compact fairly tight in good shape at the moment now there's really only one strong time trialist in uh, Isakov Is, is Isakov just went so that's that's kind of where you got some additional fatigue Isakov can't quite push as hard as some of the other guys we'll have to set him to an 87 to help keep the other guys at bay but we approach the first checkpoint so far in really really good shape there's a couple three four guys that are that have, they've got a little too deep in terms of yellow bar usage uh, they won't quite make it to the end which means we are going to need to back off as a group to an 87, I think, and then get Isakov uh, down to an 86 so that he doesn't destroy his teammates and back off this a little bit here because uh, I don't quite think we can maintain the, the, the pace that we have set. Right now, it looks like Isakov, Sift C would be the only guys to make it. So, uh, And that little climb has taken its toll. Killinch is sliding off the back. Kalnins and Hamadovich. Let's go 85 here. Last thing we need is dropping guys at the midway point that, that put us a little too far down. Kalnins, Hamadovich looking like they will regain contact. And I think we might get into a scenario here where we're going to have to reset, reassess what we have. Ooh, Kilnich also getting back on. Okay, Isakov is good. I think Isakov needs to take uh, much longer turns, give his teammates a rest, uh, but he also needs to be pushing less hard because <laughs> his 85 is not their 85. You can see the red bar, you know, is getting used up from these guys. Who else is still good to go? Sift C is. Sift C is going to have to take much longer turns. So we'll put those two on long term and they will essentially make the, the final push for the team. Bernotas can almost make it. Markovic can just about make it. But who is our fifth right now is the question. Sekaguchi? Sekaguchi needs to just sit on. 
but sitting at the back is not good actually because he'll go right to the back so we'll have to just kind of reset that again bit by bit as these guys none of them have fallen off yet as we approach the final 2k and the final climb finishing climb dreadful percentages. but I have a feeling not everybody's going to make it to the top Isakov at the front backing off a little bit more help his teammates get there Kalinch is going to be the first one to fall off then Hamidovic and there goes Kalnins can we pull Bernotas over the line? We do. You know what? I think that was just about the best you could have hoped for for this team in this team time trial, considering we only have one rider with decent time trial rating. Nobody else. Nobody else at all. We were downright awful. We should have been dead last by some margin, but we just pulled off a successful time trial that was competitive in time despite just awful awful ratings seven out of eight raiders right raiders writers had awful ratings and only one acceptable only two even mediocre i mean like truly awful for most of their ratings and yet we just managed to beat a couple teams and be competitive with the average teams not too far behind him nowhere near the front runners but still really good dive trial compared to what it easily could have been I mean, we, we could have easily been four minutes behind on this one stage 10 is a win for alexi berlikov mountaintop finish so he has established himself as a contender though he is very much not in the lead of this race no not even close he's not in it at all he's just won a stage is all <laughs> Okay, uh, it's Bardet who leads right now. Van Art, Berlikov winning the stage gets 20 points. Van Art gets the intermediate sprint. Pedersen picks up nine points, and despite the assignment to go into the break, Bernotas only picking up four points at the intermediate sprint. Clearly not what the assignment was, as he misses out entirely, which means realistically I'm going to have to play more of these stages if we are going to properly contend in the points classification as we are now 39 points adrift of Mads Pedersen. Marte has caught up to us. Van Art continues to make up ground. Uh, not looking good over the last couple of stages, especially these quick simmed stages for Brunotas, and I might have to get involved to ensure that we uh, close that gap a little bit here again there's only two sprint stages left and we can't count on those to beat Pedersen as we're not a great sprinter we're not the top sprinter so we can't just go in there and win those we need to be like Peter Sagan and go out and win it on breakaways at intermediate sprints pick up points that hard way uh, and that's gonna I think that's gonna involve us firsthand to make that happen Hershey has won stage 11 I, I've allowed the quick sim to go on for at least one more stage. If this one hasn't changed the trend, as in if we don't finish at least alongside Pedersen this time, then I will begin to intervene. Vermeersch won the intermediate sprint this time. No sign of sprinters in the top, but Mads Pedersen gets 10 points. And Bernotas again getting just 4 points. Sekiguchi getting 5. That's... That's the final straw before we get ourselves down by 50 or more points and totally out of reach. We are down 45 points to Mads Pedersen. We have a lot of work to do if we're going to get back in this thing. An intermediate sprint is worth 20 points. If he collects 10 at the back, we're only gaining 10. So we really, really need to get ourselves into some breakaways. And as the AI is not managing it despite the assignment... We've got to get ourselves involved. Kalnins and Sekiguchi have done a good job claiming points, stealing it away from others. Their points are right about equal with Marte and third combined. So that's a fair bit of points that they have stolen, but it's entirely a Bernotas classification at this point. Nobody else is in contention. Those guys are too far back to get in contention. Marte is in it. I'd say it's a three-horse race at this point. 
and Pedersen's on the verge of getting away with this thing. But there's 10 stages to go. We've done 11. Plenty of time still to come, but only two sprint stages. So the points are diminished. There's not going to be as many points out there. So I think it's time I get involved and get into the breakaway. Here is what's left ahead of us in this year's Tour de France Stage 12 Mountain Stage. Four more mountain stages later on. We have three punchy stages and two sprints left. Stage 12, double climb before the intermediate sprint. I will handle this one. I am going to race it and then try to get through those first two climbs with Bernotas in the break and get maximum points if we can. Stage 13 is going to be a lot easier to do that. Slightest chance of still being involved in the finish sprint, but I doubt it. Two ways to make sure that that doesn't happen. One, we get Bernotas into the sprint. We try to get maximum points in the intermediate sprint. And then we as a team push really hard through these climbs to drop sprinters, get the sprinters out, and leave it up to the punchers. Though that does mean Van Art as well and he would gain from that one but with only 30 available if we get maximum here he's only picking up 10 points closing that gap a little bit and that's if he wins 14 that's an easy one to get the job done and then you really don't need to worry about the climbs after that i can just go times eight speed after the intermediate sprint 15 not the easiest first two climbs but quite doable and then the intermediate but there's a chance on this one this is the flat stage there's a chance that it's not even going to be down to the sprinters at the end, but it is worth 50 points. 16 should definitely be able to navigate that one well enough. And maybe as it's stage 16, wouldn't it be something if the breakaway is given a huge lead and we have Bernotas in said breakaway and they get enough to win the stage. Now there's no way with that cat two climb that he would win. But if it's a group of 10 and he finishes 8th out of that group, he's going to get some points for finishing 8th on the stage. That would be a really good day. That would be the kind of day where uh, you can pick up 20-25 points in one stage. That would be pretty massive if we could pull that one off. 17 could definitely get to that intermediate sprint to contest that. And it looks like we're going to be spending a lot of the remainder of this race riding breakaways until we have a firm grasp on the points classification which right now from 45 points behind it could take a while before that happens 20 is an easy one to go out and get early on and 21 that's that one you got to watch out for because you know he could pick up 70 points that day you know we would pick up points but how many how many do we get 25 total on the day? That could easily happen. So there could be a huge gap on the Champs-Élysées as we are definitely not the best of sprinters. We've got that one stage win and it got us an early lead and we've been going for the points classification. And so that kept us out front for a little while, but a dominant force, a much better overall rider than Bernotas in Mads Pedersen has come along and, and taken it away from us. We're gonna have to get creative to get it back. That's going to do it for this episode, though. I'm more than halfway through already in just two episodes, so that's good. Uh, and our upcoming work is all about breakaways and intermediate sprints. Uh, the finishes of a lot of those stages won't matter, so we'll be kind of just focusing on just the little intermediate sprints through that stretch and should be able to get through quite a few stages in one episode, though. It'll take me some time to produce all those, having to race all those stages. I'm a Catholic Gamer. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Have a good one. Be safe out there, and bye for now.